Less is a perfectly functional pager. It's certainly not bad, but I wouldn't call it great either. It kinda just is. It does exactly what a pager needs to be doing. But could we take the humble pager and then make it a little bit better? Maybe if we had a little more power. So more. M-O-A-R, not to be confused with the other application also called more that is also a pager, M-O-R-E. That is a completely separate application that has nothing to do with this. Upon first opening this, the differences are blatantly obvious. Firstly, we have number lines, we have this bar down the bottom here, and then in certain files where highlighting can be done, we're also going to have syntax highlighting. This right here is a C header file. Let's go over to something that is HTML, for example. So let's go to my website, and more on this page right here. As you can see, it's highlighting the HTML just fine as well. And as for being a pager, it does basically what you would expect. So you can scroll around by using your arrow keys either up and down, or if the text goes off the screen or for whatever reason you want to go left to right, you can do that with the arrow keys as well. Now, I didn't know this about less, but this application replicates this behavior as well. You can actually just scroll infinitely over to the right. I don't know in what situation you would ever want to do that. I don't know why it doesn't stop at the end of the text, but yeah, you can do that here as well. Or if you're like me and use the mouse a lot, you can also scroll with the mouse. This is always really nice to see, even if I'm not using it for every time I launch the application. Also, you can do searching, and the searching works in a really convenient way. So pressing slash is going to start the search. Okay, nothing weird yet. Let's start typing. What you're going to notice is the searching, at least in lowercase, is not case sensitive. So this do right here and this do right here, even though one's using a capital D, are both being matched on. However, if you use a capital, then it is going to be case sensitive. This is the way that I generally like my searching working. I know some people want it to always be case sensitive or never be case sensitive, but I feel like this gives you a good balance between the two. So if you do your search and then press enter, then you can go and cycle through all of the things being searched for with the N key. And you can go in the other direction by pressing shift N or capital N, whatever you want to call it. Like you can do in something like Vim, for example. And keeping in line with that Vim or Emacs-like feature, we don't just have to search for regular text. We can also use a regular expression. Let's say, for example, I want to find every line that has a closing tag. Now, doing that with regular text would be pretty difficult. But what I can do is have the opening of the closing tag, dot star, and then the closing bracket. And now if we search for that, it is only going to match the lines that have a closing tag like this. Doesn't matter which tag it is, it's just any of the lines. Obviously, a regular expression can be a lot more powerful than that, but that's the way that I generally end up using them. And last of the Vim-like movement or searching features, whatever you want to call it, is we can jump directly to a number line. If we press the G key, it's going to bring up this thing to go to a line number. Let's say go to line 50, for example. And then if it can, it is going to put that line number at the top of the screen. But if you were to go down to the bottom of the page, for example, and do something like G140, Unlike Vim, it is not going to scroll past the bottom of the page. It is going to act like less does, where at the bottom, that is as far as you can go. Now, in this document, it's not every single line, but on some of the longer lines, you're going to notice text that goes off the edge of the screen. Now, we can go and see that by using our arrow keys, but if we don't want to do that, we can also go and enable word wrapping. This is done with the W key, and this can be toggled on and off basically as many times as you want. But if you know a document is going to need word wrapping and you want to have it enabled when you launch it, this is done with the dash, not dash, dash, as you might expect, dash, wrap option. And now word wrapping should be enabled right here. And even with using the option, it can still be toggled on and off by using the W key. Other things you might want to go and toggle are the line numbers and the status bar. So the line numbers are pretty easy to deal with. All you do 
is press the right key, you might notice the first time we press right, it's not as big of a jump, because the first time, all it's doing is moving past the line numbers. And then the status bar can be hidden with the equals key. Now, both these do have options as well. So this is going to be dash, no, dash, line, numbers, and then also dash, no, dash, status bar. Make sure you spell it correctly. And there we go, a much cleaner look, a lot more in line with less, but still has the syntax highlighting. I do find the options really strange here. Usually when you have the full size options like this, it is going to be dash dash on pretty much every application out there. That is the way it works. You only use dash with the single letter options. It's not a problem. Like It's not gonna make it so it doesn't work properly. It just doesn't really fit in with the mold of how you'd normally interact with your shell. Now, while we've seen the highlighting in the files we've seen so far, the highlighting isn't exactly perfect. So it's based on the file extension. So file extensions that aren't recognized, like say my .zshemp, which is technically the file extension, are not going to be highlighted. Other things that aren't going to be highlighted are things like shell scripts where you get rid of the .sh. Let's say some random thing in here like dmonitor. So even though it has the shebang at the top, which is the way that a lot of applications would detect if this is a shell script, it doesn't actually highlight it. The same is true for Python scripts and any other scripts you might have. I'm fine with it using the file extension, but I would like there to be either a way to manually override it for files like this, or for it to check if there is a shebang for a script, like a Python script, a shell script, uh, I think Ruby uses them as well, and things like that. Literally, the only reason I get rid of the file extensions is I don't want to have to manually write them out when I'm running the script. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal and there are other ways to strip them off, but this just works consistently on every system I run. But one thing that is really nice about the theming is it's not using some custom theme syntax that nobody's ever going to support and there's you know, two themes available. What it's using on the back end is a system known as Chroma. So all of the Chroma themes that are currently available are going to work inside of this application. So let's go and find something random. Let's say, what is this? Pasty. So if we go and use the style option, so more dash style and then pasty on, let's pick a random file in here. Let's go in here and then Gaming, uh, gaming.html, sure, why not? And it's a completely different theme now. Now, depending on what style of terminal you're using, this theme might look a little bit different. So right now, I am using Alacrity, and Alacrity is a true color terminal. Basically, what that means is it has access to the full, you know, RGB color range. But you might be using something like Xterm, for example, or maybe running this on your TTY. In those cases, they have a much more limited color set. And you can go and set which color set you want to be using. So if we go and use the dash colors option with the American spelling, and then include one of these options here, either 8, 16, 256, 16 million, or auto. Auto means it's going to automatically detect which one you're using. So on my system, it is using 16M. Let's go and set it down to eight. It'll look like this. Now, obviously, depending on your terminal theme and the theme you're currently running, let's go 16. It is going to look a little bit closer. And then 256 should pretty much look very close, but not perfect. And then if we go back to 16 million or auto, it is going to look like this, exactly what we saw before. Now, if you try to use a higher theme color set than is supported on your terminal, it might lead to some negative results. So if you don't know what you're using, then leave it on auto. Now, much like with less, it also supports ANSI color-coded text. And among other things, that means we can use it as our Git diff tool, that's going to look something like this. Now this does depend on the terminal theme you have, but on my theme, it looks exactly like it should be looking. Now that's something that Les can also do. This is something that Les can't do. So this right here is a GZ archive. It is an archive like BZ2, like XZ, like things like that. If we go and run Les on that archive, 
this is going to happen. It's going to say it's a binary file, and if I actually print it, it doesn't really give us anything of um, value. But if we go and do more example.gz, we're going to see this is actually an archive of my ZSH env. Now, I don't know why you would do this, but if you have an archive that only contains a text file, more is going to automatically decompress it. The author of the project clearly has some sort of intended purpose for this, but I don't know why you would just have an archive with a single text file in it. If someone knows, please do let me know. But right now it supports GZ, BZ2, and XZ. And the last really cool feature is using your pager kind of as like a cat-like feature. Let's do it on the previous file again, but this time include a new option. Dash, no, dash, clear, dash, on, dash, x. Yeah, some of these things are a little bit wordy and there aren't shorthand options for them as well. So let's go down to, I don't know, this bit right here. If we go and quit out of the file, now it is gonna leave it printed on the screen. This isn't something I'd wanna be using every single time, but there are occasions when I'm going through documentations or files or other things like that, where there's a bit of useful information there that I want to remain on the screen. Let's say I wanna go and copy it or I wanna have it as a reference to go and see something else, but for some reason I actually wanna go and close it temporarily and things like that. There are plenty of reasons why you wanna have the option to keep something printed on the screen. Now, if more is an application you would find yourself using on a regular basis and you want to have it set as your default pager, what you can do is go and modify your shell config. So a lot of applications out there will check your pager with the pager variable. In my case, this is set in my ZSH env. If you're using bash, you would use your bash profile. In fish, I believe it's the fish profile and things like that. I've got it set to more, and now if I go use something like my man pages, for example, so man and vim, it is going to be using more instead. Now, a couple of these things can be done in less as well, and when it comes to the customization available, less has a lot more options that are here, a lot more keys you can work with, and things like that, but I don't know how many times I've used basically any of these features built into less. What more is, is basically an opinionated pager. There is a lot less options, there is a lot less keys, but it does everything I would expect from a modern pager basically out of the box. So let me know, is more an application you would ever find yourself actually using? Do you just not care about your pager enough to use anything besides less, or do you jump between so many systems you only like relying on the standard utilities? I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scribe, Center, and Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech over tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.